Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patron, Breck Buell. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. This has to be the best video footage that we will get all year. Don't forget Tesla's annual shareholder meeting will be held tomorrow, Tuesday, starting at 4 p.m. Eastern time. So everybody traveling, safe travels. I will not be uploading a video tomorrow. I'm just going to enjoy the event. Then I'll include any news and the wrap up from the event on Wednesday. Over the weekend, Joe Tetmeyer uploaded a drone video of Giga Texas on Mother's Day and he found something very interesting. We see some new castings on the south side of the building that are right in front of this door that was open, almost like Tesla wanted us to see them. Over here, we see three, maybe four that are actually sitting on these pallets. And then on the right, we have these two that are not on pallets that are also marked with a C. So yes, the understanding right now is that these would be Cybertruck castings, which would imply that the 9,000 ton Idra press is actually up and in action. And if you look at the only image we have of the Cybertruck production line in Austin, this image was from the quarter one shareholder deck, you can see the similarities to that casting here on the line and these new castings we just saw over the weekend. There's some speculation out there that some of these are for the front, some of these are for the rear, but it could just be that these ones on the right are just flipped around and it's the same one. Honestly, I can't say for sure, so I don't wanna speculate. Either way, it's a great sign for Cybertruck production if those castings did indeed come from the 9,000 ton press at Giga Austin. Now, I believe this message when it comes to FSD beta has been around dating back to 11.3 versions, but as Dirty Tesla pointed out, this was the first time he had seen it and the proper behavior to go with it. So for the people that are in the know with FSD beta and how it's behaved merging onto highways, looks like improvements are being made. Whole Mars, who extensively tests FSD, highlights one of the most exciting things he's seen, how it sees this pedestrian but continues on, not slowing down or stopping, just like a human would, knowing there's enough time to make it through. There's been a fair amount of chatter about this George Soros cutting ties with Elon Musk, the reality is there were never really any ties to begin with. All that really happened here is the Soros fund chose to sell its Tesla holding, which amounted to about $22 million worth of Tesla stock when it was valued at $170 per share. So basically a nothing burger in my eyes. Here we have some exciting news as the Model 3 long range rear wheel drive variant that plenty of people want that originally was only going to be for commercial or business to business customers is now available in Tesla's inventory in certain European countries for regular customers. Again, it's still not available in the design studio. This is just an available inventory. So maybe some of those vehicles that were originally destined to go to commercial customers, maybe there was some excess and Tesla is just giving them up to anyone else. The word is they will be left-hand drive variants produced in China. Now, I can't confirm all of the specs for this vehicle, specifically the chemistry, as Berlinergy pointed out, but we can confirm the price and the range, which is 620 kilometers or 385 miles. Now, it does say on the WLTP, so historically, the EPA has been about 80% of that figure, but last time we checked, there may have been some changes with the WLTP to EPA listing things, specifically in these European countries. My point is I'm not sure that 20% delta between the WLTP and the EPA ranges still exists. I'm still trying to confirm. I still wouldn't be holding my breath that this variant makes it to the United States. However, I would say this is at least one step closer to that direction, 
allowing this variant to be sold to regular customers non-commercial. Speaking of the Model 3, Tesla has redesigned the Model 3 product page, at least on the desktop version. I'm not seeing any new stats, and yes, it's a bit odd that Tesla would refresh this page ahead of what is Project Highland when we're expecting that to come sometime later this year, and they still have the older or current version of the Model 3 images on the site. Just wanted to give you a heads up in case you wanted to check out the new changes to the website. Here we have some sales data for the first four months of the year in Germany. Not really a surprise, but the Model Y has the number one spot at 17.4 thousand units sold. The VW ID4 and 5 combined in second place, and then the Model 3 in fifth place at 4.7 thousand units. We get a very brief article from this Korean source just telling us that the executive chairman of Samsung met with Elon Musk last Wednesday. They discussed ways to cooperate in the future high tech industry. They met in Silicon Valley at the North American American Semiconductor Research Center, and they talked about carrying out exchanges for next generation IT development, including joint development of fully autonomous driving semiconductors. Honestly though, it's been almost three years now that Tesla has been in talks to some degree with Samsung, as we initially heard that Tesla was talking to Samsung when it came to hardware 4. From the start of 2021, Tesla and Samsung's foundry division have been talking about designs and samples of hardware 4, saying it was virtually a done deal. Unfortunately, there's really no word on what, if anything, will result from this latest conversation. On Tesla's investor relations page, they uploaded a new five minute video from Robin Denholm, just going over very high level general stuff when it comes to Tesla shareholders. We've added four independent directors and nominees in the last three years alone. Last year, we appointed Joe Gebbia, a founder of Airbnb, who brings experience in design, brand development, and management of complex regulatory environments globally. This year, we've nominated JB Straubel. JB is one of Tesla's co-founders with extensive operational experience both inside and outside of Tesla, and an exceptional technologist with first-hand knowledge of Tesla's technology. I'll link this below, but definitely nothing groundbreaking. Elon just sat down with the French president Emmanuel Macron as part of France's new business reform drive and their Choose France initiative. And Elon said he was confident Tesla would make significant investments in France in the future, but he didn't give a timeline. Elon also said, no announcement today, but I'm very impressed with President Macron and the French government and how welcoming they are. They talked about the European response to the Inflation Reduction Act, as well as the progress France has made on attracting investment for the EV and energy industries. And Macron said, we have so much to do together. But when the finance minister of France, who also met with Elon, was asked if Tesla would be building a gigafactory in France, he said he'd rather keep the content of their negotiation secret. As we talk about all the time, most countries around the world are going to end up in this place trying to woo Elon and Tesla to set up shop to some degree in their countries. Honestly, with every conversation like this that happens, it's almost like Tesla and Elon have more and more leverage in these negotiations. From Tesla Roddy, Tesla has applied to demolish multiple equipment tools and utilities lines at the Fremont factory. And we know that Tesla is always updating and improving the Fremont line, making marginal improvements, but very rarely, if ever, have we heard about Tesla planning to demolish an entire production line. So naturally, now the speculation goes to, is this going to be for the Model 3 Project Highland? For now, that's all we get. And rather than adding to the speculation, I'll just wait as I'm sure we'll learn for sure what's going on in the future. Over the weekend, Green the Only pointed out that the interior cabin camera of Tesla Tesla may see a lot more functionality and use in the future. Tesla is now planning to track additional things like how many yawns the driver had, how many blinks and how long they were, 
always learning just to calculate how drowsy the driver is. He added, it also looks like they're planning to apply this even when not on autopilot by seeing how well centered the driving is, how many lane keep assist warnings and corrections have happened lately. Plenty of people still complain about Tesla nagging the driver about hands on the wheel and torque on the wheel, things of that nature. So maybe this update in the future will reduce those warnings. Green also added that Tesla would be adding support for when the driver looks at things like the mirrors or car controls, the time, anything on the screen, these normal driving behaviors that when before you could get a strike for doing. So we'll see if this reduces the Tesla nag. Either way, I know this is something that NHTSA would be very proud of. They're big on the driver monitoring capability, so a step in the right direction for Tesla. Here we have some industry experts chiming in on Tesla's upcoming modular or unboxed manufacturing process that we're first going to see at Giga Mexico. The managing director at an industry consultancy said, I got the feeling when I watched the Tesla presentation, the Toyota production system handbook has just been thrown up in the air and machine gunned down. A German researcher called this new Tesla process revolutionary, adding this is much more than modular production. It's eliminating steps that were standard, creating new patterns of working, increasing speed, reducing complexity. The summary of these conversations, this unboxed process could rewrite the industry standard playbook and practices. There will be challenges, however, as one expert in the lean manufacturing arena said, this process won't work unless production of these big high content unboxed vehicle modules are completely synchronized and finished blocks arrive for a final put together just in time. As we know though, since inception, Tesla has been specializing in making the impossible merely late. You may recall a few years ago when Tesla got into some legal trouble with customers for limiting the charging curve on certain Model S and X vehicles in the name of safety. Well, now along similar lines on Friday, there was a class action lawsuit filed. Again, some customers now claiming that Tesla's software updates are actually limiting or reducing the driving range for certain Model S and X vehicles. I'm sure we'll get updates on this in the future, but if you want to dive in now, I'll include this link below. With this one, I don't know if it's going to be a letdown, but CNBC is kind of hyping it up as a special event, but tomorrow it sounds like David Faber is set to speak with Elon Musk during this special presentation at 6 p.m. Eastern time, right after the Tesla annual shareholder meeting. Rivian has informed Tesla Roddy that the R1T delivery times have been significantly cut. They said Rivian's production ramp continues to climb and that means customers can take delivery of R1T faster than ever. Starting today, May 13th, customers can reserve an R1T and take delivery in 14 days or less in some cases. It sounds like custom configurations still have wait times between four and 16 weeks, but if you're in the market for a Rivian, maybe worth taking another look. Ray for Tesla shared this interview clip of the VP of Baidu saying that LiDAR is likely going to be removed in the future from Jidu, a smart vehicle jointly developed by Baidu and Geely. The reason cited, cost and maintenance. Speaking of the vision only approach for autonomy, he said it needs a massive amount of data for training and that Baidu is a leader in addition to Tesla and Mobileye. In case you're into Legos, there is an idea being proposed that right now has about 7.2 thousand supporters and about two years left. I believe the number is 10,000 to reach for this to eventually possibly become a reality. This will be linked below. When it comes to Chuck Cook highlighting a problem and regression with 11.4.1, specifically on narrow roads, I just wanted to point out this type of thing is to be expected to some degree. Typically it's a three steps forward, two steps back type of deal with these updates. Or three, one, whatever you wanna say, but Chuck said that the Tesla team is aware, so I'm sure they'll work on it. The website supercharge.info continues to make a bunch of updates to their website, and for those of you new and not familiar, I'll have this link below if you want to check it out. Plenty of good sortable information on different superchargers in different locations. It sounds like a new email made its way to the information and they're saying that Elon said Tesla can't make new hires unless he personally approves them, including contractors. He told executives to send him a list of hiring requests on a weekly basis while cautioning them to think carefully before submitting. So to everybody that says Elon's basically on his way out of Tesla, I would say 
not so fast. Don't forget, no video from me tomorrow on Tuesday. You can find me on Twitter at DylanLoomis22. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Please like the video if you did, and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.